This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. So you're looking around, you're looking around, and then some ATM machine in Idaho disconnects your SSH session because you weren't using this cool tool. An ATM machine? It? No, I'm joking. What are you doing you connected do to an ATM machine? What's going on? Let's do some persistence. In Windows. I have been wanting this. Yes, you have. Because sometimes I get ADD and decide to watch TV for like five minutes, and then the stupid thing disconnects because I'm not doing anything. What the heck? Oh, yeah, yeah. This is no fun when it comes to like streaming video, is mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. I know, right? Let's okay, just break so. It down. All right, so first of all, we need to cover Plink. It's short for Putty Link, and the Plink utility is the command line equivalent to Putty. Yay, on Windows. I love command lines. I love GUIs. You're we'll going to put a GUI in front of this command line, aren't you? It might be. Oh, so man. we'll be using this along with another tool in order to keep an SSH tunnel persistent. Hooray. Yay, persistence. It's my favorite thing in the world. Okay, maybe not the favorite thing, but anyway. <laughs> so here's an example of a Plink SSH tunnel. We start by launch, launching pageant and entering our passphrase, which I have already done over here, and we already did in an episode previous to this as well. Yeah, 1109. Yes. 1110, one of those. Mm, yeah, one of those. I don't know. Look up private and public keys. Now that our private key is in memory, we can use Plink to start an SSH tunnel from the command line. Right, this is that? the fun part. So first off, open up the command line and navigate to where your Plink utility is. For me, that's by running cd backslash putty. So I go in here. And in here, there should be a plink.exe. Yes, there is. OK, cool. So I type in .exe. And I get this nice long list of all sorts of commands that I can use inside plinks. So to start a simple dynamic SOX proxy, I'll enter plink tac d, d for dynamic. Mm -hmm. So just like SSH on Linux side, where it's all command line based. Yes, exactly. So I do have to use a little bit of command line foo. You like that? Mm -hmm. Foo. Oh, yeah. Tack mm. L snubsy. And the L is for my username. Woohoo. Space tech agent for pageant. So agent stands for opening up pageant, basically. Oh, OK. <laughs> so the Plink utility, when you do tech agent, it will now use your private key in memory? Yes. And then I type in the server that I want to connect to. All right. Press Enter using username Snubsy, and it basically tells me, OK, you're good. You're connected. And there we go, a command to start our SOX proxy, proxy for all of our tunneling enjoyment. Awesome. Of course, if the SSH connection is dropped, we'll all be you know, sad face and stuff, especially if we're using the tunnel to watch the BBC or something. Like you said earlier, that mm -hmm. would seriously suck. And while auto SSH is available for Windows, kind of, it isn't exactly the easiest to set up. Auto SSH, the Linux program that you showed up, it can be run in Windows using SigWin, which is a Linux environment for Windows. If that kind of suits your fancy, you can have at it. There's a decent tutorial for setting that up over here. I'll link that in the show notes so you guys have that information. It's super easy. Yeah, I'm not a fan of SigWin, to be honest. You aren't? No. Really? I mean, if you're going to run Linux, run Linux. You know, that's what yeah, I, that's but true. Unfortunately, but what if you have to stuck. use Windows? Yeah, well, I'd rather go with a native Windows Windows app every time, mm -hmm. you know, than have to use SigWin. Yeah, you know, I'm sticky. kind of, I'm kind of the same way. So I'm more interested in using that native Windows program. Kind of, you know, sometimes, thankfully, there is a similar setup to Auto SSH that can be achieved using Plink with the help of a kind of little utility called My End Tunnel. Now, to get My End Tunnel, it's available over at this website in the show notes. Awesome. It's this native Windows util utility that lives in the system tray, or it can be run as an, an NT service in the background that kind of quietly watches Plink sessions, and it restarts them as necessary. Now, I've already gotten My End Tunnel downloaded over here, and I've started it up. Ta -da. And it's a portable app too, right? Yes, it is. That's awesome about it. So what do you do? You just put it in the same folder as uh, Plink? Yes. Uh, you have to put it over wherever your putty folder is. OK. So I put it in here with the Plink.exe, putty.exe, all those. All right. Now, under SSH server, this is where you put whatever your SSH server is called, obviously. Mine is called, uh, let's see, what is it? The relay.wifipineapple.com. 
which is totally different from the last one we used. Username is Snubsy. And then down here, we want to change a couple of the things in the settings down here. You don't want to leave them all unchecked. Let's see, reconnect on failure. Obviously, this is what we want to do, so we want to change that. Nice. Use private key. I really like the fact that my internal allows you to use private and public keys as well. So wait, if you don't check that, what does it do? Um, it'll ask you for your pass password oh, with Snubsy. I don't, I don't Type in my password. Yeah. Yeah. And it also saves the information over here, but it is salted. Oh, so it's saved. Where does it save the information? It saves um, a .txt file and then .ini over in the putty folder with the myintunnel.exe. Oh, okay. So I guess that's because it's portable. Yeah, that makes complete sense because it's not touching your Windows registry, but still, I don't like having passwords in INI files, yeah. even if they are salted. Um, just because, you know, it could still be brute force yeah. or something. Yeah, no, anyway, so yeah, um, that's pretty cool, though, that it's able to use the, uh, I'm assuming your, pa your pageant or your agent pageant. or whatever. Pageant. Well, that's, I call it pageant. I don't know. Okay, if I'm whatever. wrong, let me know. But know that sounds right things. because it's spelled the same way as those tap dance pageants that I used to belong in. For real? I, yeah, I totally tap danced when I was little. Segway, anyway, off topic, there snaps. are pictures. <laughs> My mom has them. It didn't them. happen. <laughs> So you also want to check enable dynamic socks. Fox. Oh, okay. There's our proxy, and so it yes. wants to do seventy seventy. I see. And then you want to change that to eighty eighty because uh, I've already got my switchy program on Chrome already set to eighty eighty. I don't want to go that in and well. change all those settings too. So I'm just going to change this I to eighty eighty because it's so much easier. So you hit save, and then you'll see over here. It just created my .txt and my .ini and also a remote ports.txt down here. So that is where you will find all of those configuration files. Now you can go to the status tab and click connect. So I go over here. Oh. And then hit connect. And you can just hit OK right here because it's going to go to pageant anyway and so ask wait, for that it's asking for your passphrase for your key. Right. But you haven't told it where your key is. I haven't. But I told it to use pageant and I already have pageant open. Okay. So you just say OK. So like here's no pageant. password. So click OK. Mm -hmm. Log bank pass passphrase. Bleh. Yes. Launching executable. Oh, and so it's just passing the TAC agent command in Plink and then yes. Plink already knows, okay, cool, <laughs> use the pageant. Exactly. Cool. And then, all right, connection is stable. So apparently it worked. So now I can go to the internets and make sure that this correctly works. So I'll go over here. Hi, IRC. How's it going? And I'll go to IP Chicken and ask okay, what my IP but is. Now, that's the that IP is here in the office. Exactly. Now, if I turn on Switchy mm -hmm. and I go to IP Chicken again, there you go. There we go. You're routing through the uh, the relay at wifipineapple.com. It awesome. works. That's awesome. Now, I can also do something else which is pretty cool. So, I control shift escaped it into my task manager. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, what else? Here we go. And where is Plink? I'm looking for Plink, right? You just hit P until it shows up. There it is. OK. So there's Plink right there. And another thing I can do is click End Process, and I can watch it disconnect inside my end tunnel. This so is just like when I did Kill Minus 9. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and then oh. it should disconnect over here as well. Oh, you have two. You have two planks actually running because the first one you started in the command prompt, so you probably have another one oh, listed in here. Yeah, yeah. You're probably right. <laughs> oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> All right, cool. So end that one. In process. And there we go. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, so it's going to try again in ten so, seconds. Mm -hmm. And Tells oh, me hey, connection that, failed. that connection failed. So I'll turn that off. And then it's going to restart in 10 seconds, launching executable. And it should say connection is stable again because it's going to restart the process. And there it goes. Huh? Connection is stable. And it works. That's awesome. So I love the fact that I have persistence now on Windows. And it's, it's free. It's native. Yes. I'd like to, you know, I, I think it's a cool utility. Um, I, I like the idea that it's like, Portable, you know, you could yes. probably also use it with the portable versions of uh, Putty, Porta Putty. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I know, right? Porta putty. And, um, and, and of that, things like that. I'd like to hear if you guys have any other suggestions for maintaining persistence in Windows. Of course, you guys know feedback at hack5.org is where you can do that. You can send us that. Now, stay tuned because in just a bit, we're going to get to the trivia and the technology photos yes. of the week. But first, favorite part. we're going to take a quick break. I want to take a quick moment and thank Domain.com. They have been hosting Hack5 since 2009, in addition to sponsoring us. And I got to tell you, we could not be happier. They offer such simple domain registration without all the BS. They got virtual private servers in Linux or Windows. We've been using them here on the show for the, all these great segments. And they've got reliable web hosting starting at just $3.75 a month. And that includes all this cool stuff in the app vault where you can easily install popular software from the web like WordPress and Drupal and Joomla and all those other ones that I can't pronounce. They've got SSL certificates and they've got fantastic customer service. If you don't believe me, tweet at domain.com. You're going to find out that not only are they huge fans of Hack5, but they're huge fans of happy customers. Use coupon code HAK5 to save 15% of your purchase or even a domain transfer over at domain.com. When you think domain names, think domain.com. That just about wraps up this week's episode of Hack 5, but before we get going, it's time to find out about a little thing we call trivia. Yeah, so. And Technos Photos of the Week. Yes. Which one's So first up? off is Adam from Canada. What's up, Adam? Hey, so, Canada. How you doing? Hey, Canada. Yeah, we're going to call you Canada from now on. He made his laptop, so he broke this thing up, and he uninstalled Windows 7, and he ran some awesomeness of Backtrack 5, and then he stuck it inside of a pizza box. That is, that's so how now it goes, man. It, now it's all like, okay, I'm going to quote him right here. He said, no, officer, I don't sniff packets. It's just a pizza. Really? <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that's, so, that's so cool. Yeah, well, because like a pizza box is like the, uh, the, the joking term for like a one use server in sure. IT land. You know, it's like, oh, you know, I just throw it on the pizza box over there. I just like it because I used to work at Domino's Pizza. So that is anything cool. regarding pizza, I'm like, yeah. What, Pizza. What? That's what's up. I like it. <laughs> trivia. Right. Let's do it. Last so. week's trivia question was, who was the first American woman to be awarded a PhD in computer science? Yay, women. Sister Mary Kenneth Keller. All right. Did you know that? No, I did not. Pretty it was cool. not off the top of my head. Yeah, pretty but awesome. I could probably she Google was a it sister. like everyone else. <laughs> I don't know if she was that kind of sister, but oh, well, sister, you know, sister. Whatever. Yeah, I hear that we're talking about my, favor my favorite uh, specification for this week. Yes, uh, the IEEE 802.11 AD is in DOG standard promises to deliver tri-band router and client adapters capable of what? Awesome sauce? I mean, what else does yes. IEEE 802.11 do? You can answer over at hack5.org slash trivia for a chance to win some awesome swag. Yeah, the swag's getting more and more awesome, so it's know, true. do that. Yeah. Anytime we go home from a convention, we get all that crazy swag, and I just don't have room for it all. Yeah, and then it goes Shannon to you guys. steals like the uh, hair conditioner and, and lotions. I and do. Stuff I steal and, everything. Yeah. Like anything that's free, I'm like, give me. Oh, give me. I was just joking. Do you for real do that? Yeah, I take everything. No way. <laughs> anyway. Like every in a hotel, mm -hmm. I'm the person that and takes the shampoo that? and conditioner every because, single night. Is it because it's mini and you yes. just like mini things? I love mini things. They're so cute. Bigger? Well, no. What? Well, because Ew. you're a miniature snubs. You're like, you're like portable. And it's so because because I can use them on future travels, and we travel a lot, so it comes in handy because yeah, I can fit them into my next little time you travel, little airport you're bag. Go to a hotel that also has. I shampoo. might not necessarily be in an airport. I might be going to like my boyfriend's parents' house or something. Okay. In Virginia. Anyway, or in my dad's this house. This is why you tuned in, so we're just going to wrap it up. Uh, I do want to let you guys know that we have some awesome cons <laughs> coming up. Uh, at the end of May Speaking is Layer of 1 in LA. Uh, we may or may not be there. As well as DEF CON coming up in July. Then August is Tor Camp. If you haven't mm. heard about it, find out. Google Tor Camp. It's going to be awesome. Uh, and we'll be there. As well as DerbyCon in uh, oh, Kentucky. Right? So excited for DerbyCon. Yeah, as well as uh, TorCon then in October. Yay. So it's like, you know, HackerCon season is coming up 
Yes, and I can't wait. We are enjoying the time that we have off right now. And don't forget, we value your feedback. So email us, feedback at hack5.org. Let us know what you think of the show, what you'd like to see us cover. If you have some information about persistence that you want to share with us, let us know. Yes, send us some loving. All right. Well, without further ado, um, I'm Darren Kitchen. But what about the follows and the shops? And yeah, the they, stuff they like know that. to follow us at Hack5. Okay. That works as follow and shop yeah, with us at hkshop.com. They know yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. I'm just going to peace out, y'all. Yeah. My name is Shannon Morse. All right, like I said, I'm that guy. Trust your technologist. <laughs>